On One Photo Raw is an incredible program, and it does a lot of things really, really well right out of the gate. But sometimes you want to make some changes. On One Photo Raw actually has a specialized set of preferences that you can adjust, and there are a couple of really important things in there that I want to point out. I'm going to go up to my menu bar, open up the On One Photo Raw drop down menu, and click on Preferences. There's a couple different tabs here. And the first one is going to be general. The working color space is really important. When you're opening up a new file, it will define the color space using this option. Now, right now it's set to sRGB, which is a smaller color space and more refined for producing your images for websites and on phones and tablets. If I open this up, I can import my own color profile or I can use one that has a larger array of colors. Then I don't have to worry about the fact that I'm compressing my images with this smaller color space. So I'm going to go up and choose Adobe RGB 1998, which is a much larger color space. And now anytime that I open and play around with an image in the program, it will access this information. One of the other things that's really great here is your preview background color. You can actually choose a specific color here. I know a lot of people like to work on a lighter gray tone instead of a darker color. And so you can go through and you can change that here. You can also choose which program you start in. I like to start in browse so I can look for a photo, but some people like to launch right into layers to get to editing. So you can change that here. Up at the top in the files tab, this information is all about how photos will be saved after you edit them in resize. So anytime you take a photo into resize, it's going to duplicate your image and create a new file. The copy of your image is going to be made using these preferences. So I like to save my files as PSDs, but you've got a couple of other options here. You can select a specific color space, a bit depth, and a resolution. If you're sending your photos out to external photo editors, it's also going to access this too. So if I wanted to send my images over to one of the Nick plugins, it will pull from this information. Up in the plugins tab, this is actually related to using on one as a plugin itself. These changes are really important if you use on one regularly through Lightroom or Photoshop. In the Lightroom section, this is the file information that will be pulled when you process your image through the file plugin extras menu. Anytime that it takes a raw file and duplicates that image, it will now create a PSD in this color space, bit depth and resolution. When you're going through Photoshop, what you can do is you can actually select how results are applied in your image. If you open this up, you can choose whether you'd like to copy your current layer and then produce a special, let's say on one effects layer, or if you'd like to edit on the current layer itself. I like to do a copy so that I can safeguard and have a multi-layered system. The other thing is right up at the top, you can adjust how smart photos are processed and whether you like to access them on a regular basis. If I open this up, you can see that I can choose smart photo re-editability here. And what that means is if I go from Lightroom to On One regularly, and I always want the edits I do in On One to be saved as a smart photo, I can choose this. If I never wanna access photos, I can choose normal, or I can have the program ask every single time. So you can choose whether smart photos are important and you use them all the time, or whether you don't need to access them and you can save them as normal files. Underneath the system tab, this is where you're going to access information about memory usage, where your scratch folder is located, and your browse cache. Now each one of these is set to a default that On One recommends. For instance, memory usage is really important. When you're utilizing On One Photo Raw, you want the program to be processing at as high a rate as possible. So I highly suggest that everything in the system tab stays the same. The one thing that I will mention is the scratch folder location can be moved. You can put this in whatever location you'd like. Let's go ahead and jump over to services. Any of these three services, Dropbox, Google Drive, and Microsoft OneDrive, 
can be displayed as sources inside of Browse and Layers when you're looking for photos. Now, I pretty much only use Dropbox, so I can actually turn these off so I don't even have to look at them. I occasionally use Google Drive, but never for photos, just for documents, so Dropbox is really my number one. If you use any of these, you can select the ones that you use and then uncheck the others. The last tab is going to be Photo Via. This is how you set up your Photo Via storage service preferences. You can change your account here, you can name your computer, and if you click on Photo Via app down at the bottom of your screen, it'll show you where to download the app so that you can get it on your smart device. Once you're done inside of preferences, go ahead and just click OK. All of those preferences will be saved and they'll be applied as you move forward.